Hey, it's Darius, and why is everybody buying I-75 CPA review? Maybe because I have over a hundred LinkedIn reviews and recommendations, and no other CPA review course has even close. Here's three I received just this week, July 2020. Let's see a few of these. This one says, Darius is a very enthusiastic and excellent mentor. His video lectures briefly cover the topics and ensure you're ready to crack the exams. I highly recommend I-75 CPA review to prospective CPA candidates. Well, thank you. Here's a few more from July of 2020. Darius is truly incredible. His videos and lectures are so clearly explained and definitely helped me pass all four sections of the CPA exam. So grateful to Darius for all his help and guidance. So what is it that I'm doing that the other guys aren't? The answer is easy. I don't lecture. I just explain the questions. Explain them so that you're ready to answer them when you see them. For example, if you're taking BEC, the most important topic in BEC is IT. And the most important topic within IT is controls in an IT system. IT controls. And here are some of the more popular ones on this list. And they're going to ask you questions on the exam where you're going to have to pick from this list which IT control is being described. So you're going to need to know something about each one of these IT controls, starting with field check and ending with run-to-run -run controls. So why don't we go through a few of these? So a field check is a good input control. What does that mean? It means it helps you make sure that your input is accurate. So let's say we're entering payroll for someone with an $18.50 hourly rate. When we get to the hours worked box, we should only be able to enter numeric characters because there should be a field check here as a control that if we try to enter alphabetic characters, letters A through Z, it wouldn't let us enter that because of a field check. So the field check would be the input control that we would need here in this hours worked field to make sure that only numeric characters can be entered into that field. A field check is also called a data format check. So a field check, it's known as a data format check or a data type check. Make sure that you're putting the right data into the field. So you can expect some kind of question on BEC regarding IT controls. It'll say something like for each numbered item, choose from this list which control applies. A control from the list may be selected once, more than once or not at all. And most likely one of the controls in that list will be the field check. Let's talk about another one of these controls. What's a logic test? A logic test often involves a relationship between two or more fields. Let's go back to the payroll program and I'll show you what a logic test would look like. All right, here's a logic test. So if we were entering payroll, let's say we had somebody who worked 44 hours. So we put 40 hours into the regular hours work box and then we put four hours into the overtime box. A logic test would be a good test to prevent us from being able to put any hours in the overtime box unless there was already 40 hours in the regular hours box. If we tried to put hours only into the overtime box without any hours in the regular hours box, the logic test wouldn't allow it because why are we paying someone overtime if they didn't work 40 hours? So we call that a logic test or a reasonableness check. So if the employee only had 30 hours worked or some amount under 40 and we tried to put hours into the overtime box, it shouldn't allow us to do that because of the logic test, which is a good input control. All right, then what's a range test? A range test is a form of a limit test. Let's go back to the payroll program for this one. So what a range test would be like, here we have somebody who has an $18.50 per hour rate and worked 30 hours, and the payroll program calculated their pay to be $555. That's their gross earnings, you see? And you can multiply that out, 30 times 18 and a half, you should get 555. What a range test would do is if we already had a range of payroll rates where nobody in the company can earn less than $10 an hour, or more than $250 an hour, if we tried to enter a number into the payroll rate box that was less than 10 or more than 250, it wouldn't allow it. The input control 
called a range test would reject that input. All right, next up is the sign test. What's a sign test? A sign test would be a good control to make sure that we'd have to enter a positive number into hours worked. If we tried to enter a negative number, like minus 10 hours, it wouldn't allow it. It would just put the 10 in without the minus. Because a sign test would be a control that would be applied to this field so that only positive numbers would be allowed in the hours worked box. What are financial control totals? What financial control totals are, they could be, you see how this person had gross earnings of $555 because they worked 30 hours and made $18.50 an hour. So this one individual has gross of $555. Well, let's say there were three people working and all three of them earned $555. Then a financial control total would be their total gross for the three of them. So if three people worked and earned $555, then the financial control total for gross earnings would be $1,665. And if you already added that up, you can compare that to what the payroll program gets for the financial control total. All right, here's an interesting one. What's a check digit? A check digit is where you have a string of numbers and you're going to enter them into a system. The last number in the string confirms the accuracy of the previously entered numbers. So let me show you how this works. Here's a simple example of a check digit with only four total digits. Usually there's a lot more numbers in the string than just four, but there's four digits here, three, eight, and six, and then the check digit is two. The two is there to confirm the accuracy of the three, eight, and six. Here's how it would work. You'd have an algorithm that would say add three plus eight plus six, and you would get 17, and then you would say 17 plus how many digits did you start with? Three. There were three digits there that added up to 17. 17 plus three is 20. So you end with 20, right? Well, 20 is two and zero. Two plus zero equals two, and that's your check digit. So the two in this last position would confirm the accuracy of these first three numbers. Usually where you would see a check digit is with 16 digit credit card numbers. So if you're doing credit card processing and you have to enter all these numbers into a string, the last digit, the seven, confirms the accuracy of all the previously entered digits. So the credit card processing system would perform the algorithm and as long as it came out to seven, they would accept it. The system would accept the credit card number as being accurately entered if the system independently calculated seven as the check digit. So the CPA exam, BEC, you've got to know something about all of these IT controls. And no one else is going to spoon feed it to you like this. And that's why I have over a hundred LinkedIn recommendations, several in the past few weeks. In the I-75 course, we go through the whole sim together in the video. Number one might be a type of field and limit test that prevents the entering of an employee's hourly rate of any amount under $10 per hour or over $200 per hour. What would be the control that would prevent us from entering an hourly rate of under 10 or over 200? So remember we were here and we tried to change the hourly rate and we were not allowed to put anything in under 10 or over a certain amount either because that's a range test, isn't it? So the answer to number one is range test. Here's number two. In an online sales order system, an input control ensuring that the number of items entered into the quantity ordered field must be at least one. So it couldn't be zero, couldn't be a negative number. What would that be? That's a sign test. A sign test is a type of field and limit test that ensures a positive number is entered into a numeric field and would reject the entering of a negative number or a zero. Here's number three. Credit card numbers end with a single digit that confirms the accuracy of the previous numbers. This control is known as, and the answer is check digit or self-checking digit. Remember, that's the last digit in the string. It's strategically placed there to ensure that the previous numbers entered are correct. 
And in the case of credit cards, it's designed to ensure that each credit card entered into the system is valid and accurate, accurately entered. The check digit is created by applying an arithmetic algorithm to the digits. Whenever the credit card, including the check digit, is entered into the system, the computer recalculates the check digit and compares the calculated check digit to the digit entered. If they match, input and processing continues. If they do not match, the input and processing is halted. So if you understand these IT controls, you're doing pretty well for BEC. But if you don't understand those IT controls, get yourself on I-75, go to cpaexamtutoring.com, click on the one part, and then BEC course. It'll take you to the host platform, which is BrainCert. And then you can choose the $109 monthly subscription, or you can get six months of BEC for $299. So get the course they're all talking about, I-75 CPA Review, and see what everybody's saying. Hi, I'm Darius Clark, and here at I-75 CPA Review, I'm going to put you on the right road. So when you go to take FAR, Audit, BEC, and Reg, you're going to have so much confidence, you're going to be like this guy doing a backflip. So go to cpaexamtutoring.com and take I-75 to your next pass. Because the only thing more painful than failing the CPA exam is failing a backflip. So for just $109 a month, become a monthly subscriber to I-75 CPA Review and get all four parts for the same subscription.